to, to summarize the question, are, are students bored with economics because economics is boring? Uh, and the reason economics is boring is because we're only allowed to speak in mathematical terms. We're not allowed to discuss things like Andy's medallion. Um, well, yes and no. Uh, I mean, if you, want, if you want a fundamental critique of economics, it's not going to come from me because basically I am an economic imperialist. I really believe this stuff is very, very useful and can explain an awful lot of stuff that most people, e even many economists, just think well, economics just doesn't apply. Um, but I realize there are you know, important, credible critiques of economics out there. Um, but in terms of the maths, I agree. I mean, there are very serious pieces of economics going on out there that are being published in credible journals, not always economic journals. So, for example, a, there was a paper published last month in Science by two <coughs> economists, Bailey Klinger and uh, um, Ricardo Hausman, and two physicists, Laszlo Barabasi and Cesar Hidalgo. And what they did was they tried to work out, it's a very, very important question, which is how do economists develop? And in particular, how do economists develop through uh, the space of product. So you start off making apples, and you move to pears, then you move to uh, washing machines, then you move to making computers, uh, and then you move to you know, creating structured finance products. So a big, big, big question. Um, and they tried to measure the way that different products were linked to each other and how easy it was to make a transition from one product to another. And it turns out, this is not very surprising, but it's very, very hard for economics to measure, that it's much, much easier to move from making apples to making pears than it is to move from making apples to making semiconductor chips. And we sort of all, we knew that, but it's not, it's not in any, any not in economics paper. It's not in any theory of development, except <laughs> qualitatively, you know, there's a big push necessary. You know, but quantitatively, it's very, very hard. And they've drawn a beautiful, beautiful picture in science of the global product space. And they can show countries edging across this product space and developing very, very gradually. And they can show how East Asian economies are at the center of very dense product spaces, so it's very, very easy for them to move again and again and again, whereas African countries are on the fringes of the product space. South Africa is an example. Nothing, South Africa makes a bunch of things that aren't like anything else. And so if South Africa's trying to expand its economy, it has to make some big leap. Uh, this is just an example of a very interesting piece of economics published in a very credible journal that does not use the equations typical to, to economics. I mean, it's, it's, good quantitative work, but it just doesn't match up with anything you'll find in an economics textbook. Um, now, that I think, I, I think we have permission to talk about that. You know, it may not pass any exams, but I think it, it gets people interested. It's, a, it's, a, it's an appendix to an, uh, to an essay answer, and it shows where the frontiers of economics are moving. And another example would be um, agent-based modeling. Agent-based modeling doesn't get in the journals very much because, well, you can't write an agent-based model. You can only put it on the computer screen and, and play. But we've all heard of Thomas Schelling, Nobel Prize winner in 2005. And most of us have heard of Thomas Schelling's chessboard and the way that he showed racial segregation on the chessboard. And you can put that on a, on a PowerPoint slide and show people. Now, write it, you know, write it down in equation format, not very easy. But a fundamental economic insight, absolutely. Is Schelling a credible figure in economics? Got a Nobel Prize? Yeah, I guess he is. And he was before he got the Nobel Prize. So I, I, I accept the, the core of your criticism, and I think that part of the solution has to be for economics lecturers to be reaching out and, and just showing students that there's, a little, there's something a little bit different out here, there's something a little bit different out there. Of course, we can't do too much. As, as a journalist, I can do that all the time. As a lecturer, you have to basically stick to the syllabus. You can't distract people constantly with these things. But I think just to show that there is, there's light at the end of the tunnel, there are other, other approaches is important.